Hello there, and welcome to the highly anticipated feature spotlight for Choice Text, eSpark's revolutionary new approach to playfully personalized reading practice. Now, think about reading practice for a moment. Historically, it's all looked pretty much the same for decades, right? We start with this one-size-fits-all reading passage. It might be uh, an excerpt from a classical novel. It might be a news article or a short story or any one of a number of different formats, but the point's the same. Every student works from the same passage, answers the same comprehension questions to show that they understood it, and then moves on to the next lesson. The problem here is that those text passages, they may or may not be relevant to your students. They may or may not be interesting to your students. And in some cases, based on student backgrounds, they may be barely comprehensible to some of your students. What if there was a better way, right? What if we could tailor those text passages every time to the unique interests of your students in the moment? What if we could use the power of generative AI to create lessons on the fly based on what your students are interested in learning about? That's what you can bring to the table this year with Choice Text. Let's take a look. Now, keep in mind, students are going to encounter choice text as they work through eSpark's adaptive path. So uh, most reading informational and reading literature quests from kindergarten all the way up through eighth grade are going to feature a choice text activity. Of course, as a teacher in eSpark, you also have the ability to assign specific skills. If you navigate to your small group skills tab and type in choice text, you'll bring up every SGS that features a choice text activity. So from here, I can filter down to the grade level I'm teaching, choose the skill I want my students to work on, and as with any small group skill, you can assign it to the whole class, or to a group of students, or even an individual student. Once it's assigned as a student, here's what things look like. As soon as I log in, I'm going to see the most recently assigned small group skill at the top of my screen. I click on this. As with any small group skill, it's going to start with an instructional video. We're going to introduce the concept to the student. We're going to model it for them. We're going to tell them what to expect in this lesson and, and set some goals for what they should be learning. Then in the choice text activity, we're going to experience this in a whole new way. So keep in mind as you're watching, uh, this is being read aloud right now. That happens by default. I have my tab muted for the sake of this demo. but. Uh, students won't have to read all the way through. They have their little pal Rocky down here to walk them through this experience, tell them what they need to do at every step. Also keep in mind, we're doing a third grade standard right now. So this is the third grade experience where at every step along the way, we're gonna have some pre-built options. We're also gonna give students the freedom to enter uh, something of their liking. So the first step here, describe the main character of our story. Uh, I let's say you want to make a story about a video game character. In between, Rocky's going to do a little moderation, make sure that we're not putting anything inappropriate in here, and after it passes, we'll move on to the next step. So we want to give them a name. We've seen students do their own names here, their names of friends or siblings, uh, or even some of their favorite celebrities. They just like to have fun with this. In this case, let's write about Marvin, the video game character. All right, then let's pick a trait. Hmm. This is interesting. I'm going to say we want our character to be brave. And then lastly, a setting. Where do we want our story to take place? I guess in a video game would make sense, but let's mix it up a little bit and say, oh, I don't know. How about New York City? All right, so you see, we've gone through four choices. As a student, I've gotten to pick things that I'm, I'm thinking about right now, things I'm interested in. So let's see what happens when we click the Start Reading button. Oh, Marvin's Big Apple Adventure. This, this is the eureka moment for kids, right? Even the most reluctant readers, we've seen their eyes light up. They focus as they read the passage. They get more excited as they go along, and they realize that the passage they're working off of uh, is of their own making. It's it's their creation. There's a lot of ownership here uh, and a lot of going back and wanting to see more of it. So 
I won't read the whole story, but you can get the point here. In, in the bustling city of New York, there lived a daring video game character named Marvin. He was known for his bravery, always ready to face any challenge. But Marvin was more than just a character in a game. He had a heart full of dreams and a desire to explore the real world. So you can imagine where this story is going. Let's read on a little bit. Take our time, enjoy our story. Keep in mind, this can also be read aloud for students who uh, are maybe still developing readers. And so, Marvin, the brave video game character, had found a new game to play, the game of life in the Big Apple. He was no longer just a character on a screen, but a part of the vibrant tapestry of New York City. Delightful read. The story has everything, has, has good themes, and we're going to click Done Reading. Keep in mind, while this is really fun for students, this is not the point of the exercise, right? The point is still to work on those reading skills. In this case, context clues, which was what was assigned by my teacher. So because eSpark is really built on student feedback, we pride ourselves on being the student's choice for math and reading practice. The first thing we're going to do is ask students what they thought of their story. We want to keep monitoring these ratings, make sure it's still a good experience for them uh, as many times as they go through it. And if there's something specific that students don't like, they can give us more feedback below. If there was something about the story they wish was different, they can put that in here. For now, we'll go ahead and skip that. This part is the meat of the lesson. This is uh, the assessment questions based on the student or on the story that was just developed. So keep in mind, we just built this story literally minutes ago, but we're also now able to generate these comprehension questions based on what was created. So the question here, what can you infer about Marvin's character from the story? So we know just from the intro of the story that it's likely the first answer here, but let's see what happens if we pick something wrong. Marvin's a lazy character, not interested in adventures or learning. Rocky, along with walking us through the steps to build our story, is also going to be able to pro provide real-time re remediation and feedback to the student. So here, you can see Rocky's perfectly aligned with the skill we're working on. Here's the hint. Look at the description of Marvin's character in the first paragraph. What can you infer about Marvin's character from the story? Well, we know Marvin was brave. He had a heart full of dreams. Oh, this is looks like a, a winner here. Sure enough. So now you've gotten to see the real-time assessment, the real-time remediation. Uh, students, in general, do a great job answering these questions because we've seen they're just so much more invested in the story than they might be traditionally working off a one-size-fits-all text. We did it. Now that the comprehension questions are done, we're going to ask students if they want to add this to their class library. This is where we'll be able to see all of the shared stories from students, all the stories they wanted to spotlight and uh, enable their friends to read with them. So in this case, we're going to say, no thanks, I like this story, I don't want to add it to the class library, and we'll move on. Now, as students click this blue arrow, they would move on to the post quiz part of the small group skill. Now, as a teacher, we have this new tab called the student work tab, where we can come in and see every choice text story that our students have generated. This can be really helpful to get a feel for what your students are interested in, uh, what your students are writing about, and just make sure that everybody is on the same page, everything's looking good. In this case, we can see Marvin's Big Apple Adventure here from our friend Eileen. This is the story we just created. It's now presented in a printable format, so it can be saved and shared via email or printed out and hung up on the wall. We have a little uh, spot down here that shows which standard the student was working on when they created the story. And it's all here available to look at. So a brand new kind of experience here, a brand new approach to reading. We are really excited to see students use this feature throughout the school year. Early feedback has been nothing short of outstanding. Uh, and like I said, even the most reluctant readers are finding this as a way to get invested in reading and to enjoy the process. And because this is such a new feature, 
We sincerely hope you'll let us know what you think, early and often. If you see something that doesn't look quite right, please reach out to our support team. Also, we just want to hear those stories of, the, of students and how they've explored choice text, how it's changed the way you approach reading instruction in your classroom. Until next time, have fun e-sparking.